Hi, Alosh Alinov here. Um, today I'd like to share with you some of the questions that you guys have posed in the last week. Firstly, thank you so much as I haven't had a response to any of my mailers, uh, such a response in the last 15 years. Uh, we have had over 200 people that have posed genuine questions and comments on grey water and rain catchment and so on. So thank you. Blessings. Um, yes, so today I'm going to speak about the wetland and just answering some of these questions that you have had and I've grouped them as there were a lot and the, firstly just to explain to you what is grey water and what's the difference between grey water and black water and rain water. Well grey water is this water as you can see here is coming straight from my shower. It took me a couple of minutes to replumb. Um, it was an easy plumbing uh, scenario. Um, yeah, and it's got nutrients in it, soaps, um, dead skins, and all, and all of that. So, in nature, there is no waste. So, these nutrients can be used to irrigate your garden, or like I'm doing here, I'm putting it through a simple wetland and um, to irrigate your vegetables. Um, the black water is very similar, and but it's got sewage in it, so the stuff from the toilet, and it's can be recycled, can be cleaned, and as one of the future workshops, we will be doing that. Um, and then there is rainwater. So rainwater has also got nutrients, much less than grey water, but it does have nutrients from the roof, and as it flies through the atmosphere, it collects bits and pieces on itself. So that that is the main reason why, when <clears throat> just before the rain, one would put a couple of scoops of chlorine into the pool just to keep that balance going <laughs> the balance anyway so yeah so that's the main difference between the uh, the gray water and the black water and the rain water they can all be harvested they can all be used and I'll be sharing with you some other questions as we go a smell so smell obviously and hygiene is quite a <clears throat> quite an important question well I'm not gonna lie to you. In the first two, three months, uh, whilst the roots were establishing themselves, there was a little bit of smell, but only when I irrigated the garden. So, you know, choose irrigation time when your family is asleep, or you, you can always run a more expensive system under lawn and drip irrigation system that basically all covered underneath the mulch and ground, so you don't smell that at all. But if you do do open irrigation with a hose pipe or a sprinkler, um, yes, the, for the first three months the water does smell. Um, however, I'm proud to share with you that yesterday I actually took a sip of my grey water three wet, two wetlands later, and there's no smell and the water is actually of reasonably good quality. Not to say that that's what I'm going to start drinking now, but just to do a little test. I was really surprised last night to say that the water actually stopped smelling and th this little wetland is only two and a half months old um, it has given time to establish itself but I'll speak about him right now just now um, what can the wetland process and what type of what not to put in and what you can put in you know when I flew to America to learn um, earth ships and they are radically sustainable buildings that made build out of tires and they've got their own build of build in wetlands and I was surprised to see that they use just about any shampoo and um, any soap so it's not like, like we're shopping at a health shop and using um, healthy ingredients but it's not necessary so you can still use your pantene and whatever else you use um, Obviously, they're advisable to go in healthy, healthier route for your skin and for the planet, but the wetland does chew up the nutrients. So it's the nutrients in the wetland that are seen as an acid to the plants. Hence, these plants are just <laughs> being pumped with soap. Um, this is just my bath water, so bath and shower, but they're loving it. So, yes, it's a very small wetland and it does not process the kitchen um, um, outlet right as yet. Um, it can, but kitchen waste I would treat as black water and put it together. 
because there's lots of bits and pieces, a lot of grease, a lots of nutrients, just way too much for a little wetland like this to process. But bath and shower, this little guy is 1.2 square meters and really chews it up so nicely. Um, and and thereafter I'm using this water to irrigate my vegetables, organic vegetables, and we're eating those vegetables every day. And they love it too because there's still a little bit of nutrients left, but all the harmful soaps and whatever else that has been has been taken away so if you are using more dodgy <laughs> soaps and shampoos I, I possibly could up this to double or even triple the size which is only three point three and a half square meters really not much um, space um, to take up yeah what not to put in um, avoid putting extreme chemicals like bleach and jig that you pour down the drain or drain cleaners that will kill the, all the bacteria and microorganisms in the wetlands. So please don't do that. Just your shampoos and soaps will do real well. And yeah. Next question is um, storage of grey water. And um, generally, we don't store grey water. It's not something that you can store rainwater. But grey water, since it's still got some nutrients, um, you generally use it. So it will go through a wetland, it will over, o overflow, and then it goes to possibly another wetland, it can overflow again, and then it can go to a storage tank out of which you can pump it out. And in future videos, I'll show you the whole system. Um, or you could have a pump, um, submersible pump on the corner of this wetland and pumping it straight out of here to irrigate your garden as well. So we generally use it as we accumulate it. Um, so after five days of being stored, which gets to about a thousand liters, you want to just, you know, <laughs> irrigate it out to your garden. Um, and yeah, so do use your gray water. It's not a thing to store. It's just let it flow. Um, another question, maintenance. Oh. <laughs> hang in there <laughs> my tripod just a little bit um, another question is maintenance there is no maintenance on this wetland as such um, except for I don't know if you can see now but at the end of my pipe here on a plum there is just a little socket a stock a stocking which um, catches the hairs and <laughs> uh, little bits of you know bigger bits from the bath uh, maybe a child drops a toy or something small that goes into the drain so that will serve once once three to six months could be just emptied out and replaced back over so really there is no maintenance the plants are the system the plants do all the cleaning themselves and um, as long as you don't put any harsh chemicals they'll carry on thriving and um, living for indefinitely <laughs> How do we send the water to the garden? Well, you can send the water either using, mm, it depends all on the gradient in your garden, you know, so if your gray water is below where, you're, where you want to irrigate, then of course, you're either going to bucket it with buckets or uh, watering cans, or you're going to um, use electricity with a little submersible pump. They're not expensive, they don't use a lot of electricity. Um, they're available for between a, a one and two thousand rand, and you could just, you know, in the beginning I was carrying the water and irrigating, but I know time might be a constraint for most of us. So, yeah, a little pump and with a bowl valve. So basically, as the water gets to a certain level, it will switch on automatically and drain your grey water out. And um, so that is the one way to send it uh, around and as I said if you've got a small garden and you've got a little bit of time and don't do enough gym <laughs> you could just put it in the watering can and to irrigate it out and ask ah, quicker systems that you can just scoop it out and you know uh, that's if you have a storage tank another question is um, yeah what, what happens if you have space limitations or double story house or you're in a rented space well, as I said, the plumbing of these 50 mil diameter pipes is really, really, really simple. Unless it is below the ground, the outlet, then 
you do not have a problem to plumb it and in future videos we'll be showing you how I've done it it really you could do it in under half an hour you could replumb the whole thing for very very cheaply obviously depends on length of pipe you need but it's standard plumbing shop you just tell them what you need and uh, and I'll be providing a few pictures of things that you do do need and they'll sort you out um, elbows 90 degree and so on it does get tricky as I said if the outlet is below the ground and if you're in a rented space um, you know you don't want to mess with that however the simple plumbing that I'm talking about even if you're in a rented space and you're there for a year or two you could replumb it and you could yourself plumb it back over and connect and nobody will, will notice the difference and as I said if you're in a rented space this little guy which is in that uh, thousand liter container um, you can take it with you wherever you go um, you'll need a bucket to obviously move the gravel um, and so on uh, but you can take it with you and you can save the plants for your future space um, regulations there are no regulations for this type of thing yet um, in America uh, they do have regulations and how they have avoided those is they have created a three-way bulb so there is inlet um, and then the outlet can go to drain which is what the government wants and or with a diversion valve it can go via wetland and then overflow 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 through a variety of tanks and if you still haven't used it that can go into a drain but by that time the water is so clean you might as well you know <laughs> use it and not throw it into the drain so there are currently no regulations but if there will be there is a way to go around it as I say with a three-way way valve so if the inspector should come well you know <laughs> the water still gets to the drain but there is a slight diversion and a diversion happens to be a, a plant-based system which cleans up the water anyway that's that would be most of the questions that um, are answer, that have been asked um, oh yes there's one more uh, what happens if you're in a flat um, I will I've ordered a siphon pump which works on this way that you know you can suck up water and then it goes down so that little siphon pump without any plumbing can drain your bath out you know you'll have a little pipe going through the window and then you can put it under your apple tree or a little basin or whatever you have in the ground to, to, to catch that water so that little simple system uh, I've managed to get from a uh, bit of buy it's um, five liter hand hand pump siphon siphon pump so you will be able to get it um, <laughs> unfortunately it takes about 40 days to arrive so I've just ordered it three days ago I was hoping that I could get it in South Africa to show you for this video but I wasn't able to but it's a little pump that you use in a auto uh, in a car industry to for radiators and getting water out so you'd be able to get that pump uh, from Bidobai or maybe even find it in South Africa let me know <clears throat> and with that pump you'd be able to get the water started disconnect it and you know drain your entire bath wherever you want um, <clears throat> so there are simpler ways um, but as my mom taught me you know take a bucket if you're in a flat and you know <laughs> irrigate your little plants with the bath water use it to flush the toilet so she, my mom would never drain the bath should leave it there until she used it to flush the toilet um, in America they do use gray water from the wetlands automatically plumb back to your toilet so when you flush your toilet the water the water irrig the, the water tops up in a toilet from the wetland obviously goes through a charcoal filter and so on so you don't have you know any, any little bits at all although they're fine I mean there's lots of bits in the toilet anyway but you do do you can use this water to flush the toilet and you can automate it to go back to the toilet simply one more thing I'd like to add is that you can use your bath water and your shower water straight into any of your trees whether it being fruit trees or ornamental trees you can use your gray water straight as long as you don't put jig and harsh chemicals into your water your trees will love it in fact plants irrigated with gray water are naturally much stronger much healthier because of the nutrient content and the lack of chlorine that's been evaporated from the water 
um, only when you come to highly water-based vegetables such as tomatoes and lettuces and cucumbers that's where I would just put the water through a little wetland and um, you know irrigate my veggies with that water uh, just helps to take out the phosphates and whatever other nasty stuff in your shampoos there is um, but as I said grey water on your lawn or any of your trees or shrubs or roses uh, they're going to love it so please start using your grey water love to hear your comments scroll below and leave a comment or hit a reply button and let me know what you're thinking namaste